Hello and welcome to a new unit. Uh, today we are going to start graphing quadratics. So you'll see here my notes, quadratics number one. Um, we just got done solving quadratics uh, through factoring, through square rooting. So now we are going to transition into the graphs of those quadratic functions. So um, you can see on my screen here that I'm going to be split between using Desmos. Um, that is what I'm gonna probably use the most of. And then I have a graphing calculator here as well. Um, I will show you how to use your graphing calculator um, a little bit. I know that a lot of you don't have a graphing calculator at home. So um, I'm going to use Desmos here. And before I begin, I wanna point out to you that I am using the North Carolina NC test version of Desmos. So you can use the link that I have provided for you, or when you do your Google search, you can search Desmos NC test, and that way you are using the correct version. Um, the other version has everything opened up. Uh, the North Carolina test version has some functions turned off, which means that um, the restrictions that North Carolina has placed on us, we will be following if we are here using this NC test version. Okie dokie, so let's get started. So we are going to graph quadratic functions and we are going to find the vertex point of the quadratic. So a little bit of review before we start graphing. Uh, what does it mean to be a quadratic equation? So a quadratic is any equation whose highest power is equal to two. That means that you must have an exponent of two on your variable, and there can be no other exponents that are larger than two. So that means that you have to have an exponent of two, and you can't have an exponent that is larger than two. Let me show you some examples that would be quadratic. Three x squared, highest exponent is two y equals x squared minus 3x plus 4. Here I have an invisible exponent of 1. Here I have an exponent of 2. So that is the largest exponent. That makes that a quadratic function. y equals the quantity x minus 3 squared. So I have a highest exponent of two. When this x gets multiplied out two times, an x times an x is an x squared, and that is going to be our largest exponent. All right, some non-examples, things that are not quadratic functions. Y equals three x. If you remember from math one, that is a linear function. It does not have an exponent of two, therefore it is not quadratic. Y equals seven X to the third power. Uh, exponent is larger than two. This actually is a cubic equation and we will learn about cubic equations in the next math course, that would be math three. Uh, one more example that is not quadratic would be x squared. You're thinking, yes, that is quadratic and you are correct. But as soon as I put on a minus two x to the seventh, that seventh power makes this not a quadratic equation. All right, a little bit more review, standard form. You have seen standard form a lot, a lot, a lot out of me so far. This is f of x equals which is the same as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And remember, there's a little invisible one on that exponent on x. And when we talk about standard form, okay, it's easy to identify a, b, and c when your function is in standard form. So the a always is the lead coefficient and it is the lead coefficient for the quadratic term. So A is always attached to the X squared. The X squared is what makes this thing a quadratic function. So A is always attached to the quadratic term. The B is the coefficient 
for the linear term, that's the bx, x is just linear, so b is always the coefficient for the x, and then c is the constant. And by constant, I mean that it has no variable. So putting things in standard form just means that we are putting our exponents in decreasing power. So exponent of 2, exponent of 1, exponent of none, because I don't even have a variable sitting there. All right. So let's take a look at numbers 1, 2, and 3. We're going to put it in standard form, and we're going to label A, B, and C. So x squared, x to the first, and no x at all. That is in standard form. Exponents are decreasing in power. A is positive 2, goes with the x squared. B is negative 3, goes with the x, the linear term. And then C is the constant, which is a positive 4. Number 2. I've got x squared and x to the first and then a plus, ooh, it's missing, the c is missing. What does that mean? When it's missing, it is a zero. So a is this imaginary, not imaginary, what am I saying? This invisible number here, one in front of the x squared, and then b is a positive five that is in front of the x. Number three, you will see, is not in standard form. So I need to do a swip swap of these two terms first. So I'm going to rewrite this as the negative 3x squared followed by the positive 2x. So it looks like I have another one of these situations where I have an a, a b, and then my constant, my plus c, is missing which means I have a C value of zero again. A is my lead coefficient. That would be a negative three. And then B goes with the linear term, which is a positive two. Okie dokie. So kiddos, as I go forward, I'm going to have multiple examples for you to practice. I encourage you to pause your video like after we do one, I encourage you to pause your video to try number two and then hit play and then go through the problem and make sure that you have done it correctly. And then pause the video again, you attempt number three. So I'm not going to be giving you those pauses in the video. I'm just going to keep going. You can pause the video. You can rewind the video as much as you need. Okay. The vertex point. So a um, a quadratic has a U-shape, and that U-shape is called a parabola. So a parabola is what we call the shape of a quadratic function. And the most important point on your parabola is the vertex point. It is the point where the function turns around. So let me come off to the margin here and show you what I mean by the function turning around. So if you had me for math one, you know the question that I always ask is, does your parabola smile or frown? This is what I mean. If a parabola is a U shape, that means that your U can open up, which would be a smile, or the U can open down, which would be a frown. The way that we get a smile is when our A value is positive, because positive people smile a lot. The way that we get a frown is when we have a negative A value. A negative A value gives us a frown. Usually when we are feeling negative about something, we're not in a very good mood, um, and typically we are frowning. So check out this vertex point. So on a smile, if I follow this graph, I'm headed downwards until I get right here, which is the 
lowest point on the parabola and then my graph turns directions and now is heading back up again. So this point right here, the lowest point, the turnaround point, that is called the vertex. And because it is the absolute bottom, the lowest point on this smile, we are going to call that a minimum value. Because the vertex is at the lowest spot, we call that a minimum value. All right, let's compare that to the frown. So the frown um, kind of mimics a ball being thrown up into the air, right? So you throw a ball up into the air and it goes up, 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 up until it can't go any higher. It reaches its maximum value, that's the vertex, and then that ball gets taken over by gravity and then starts to come back to the ground. So when your vertex is at the absolute highest point of your parabola, that is called a maximum value. So that is what we are going to identify in these problems here. We are going to find the vertex point for each quadratic. We're going to identify the point as the maximum, which would be on a frown, or the minimum, the lowest point, which would be on a smile. So I'm gonna show you the algebraic way to do this, and then we are going to use Desmos and our calculator to help us finish the rest. So the algebraic way to find the vertex point is this, x equals negative b over 2a. So we are going to be using negative b over 2a to find the x value of our vertex point. And then we are going to use either our table of values um, to find out what the y value would be, or you could continue to use algebra and you could plug in your x value to find your y value. All right, so check it out. Number one, I have an a value of negative three, a b value of six, and a c value, a constant of negative two. So I'm going to use x equals negative b over 2a. Now remember, this negative b, that just means the opposite of b. All right, so the opposite of a positive 6 is negative 6 over 2 times a, which is a negative 3. That's going to give me negative 6 over a negative 6 which is positive one. So if I look at my a value, the lead coefficient is negative. That means that this graph is going to be a frown. So I'm going to label it as a frown. Because it is a frown, the vertex is gonna be up here at its maximum value. And that coordinate is gonna be located at one comma something. So I'm almost done with my final answer here. I know it's a frown. I know that on a frown, the vertex is up at the very tippy top. So that's a maximum value. And that maximum value is gonna be located at one comma something. So let me show you on my calculator first. So in my calculator, I have typed in my equation into y equals. And now I can go look at my graph, which is right here. So if I use trace and I type in an x value of 1 and hit enter, then I can see here that my coordinate is located at 1, 1. If I choose instead to look at my table of values, uh-oh, um, hold on one second. Let me reset my table to start at 0. Okay, so if I look at my table of values and I go to an x value of one, I can see that that goes with a y value of one. So the vertex is located at one comma one. Let me show you what that looks like on Desmos. So on Desmos, I'm gonna type in my equation. I'm gonna do y equals, and then you need to get a negative 3x squared. Two ways you can do the squared. This little icon right here will open up and you can choose the squared from there. The other way to do it, let me go backwards. 
The other way to do it is to use the caret button on your um, on your keyboard. So if you look at number six, the button number six, you'll see your little exponent caret button. So all you have to do is hit shift six and that will raise you up into the exponent where you can type two and then just make sure that you arrow out like when you do it on your calculator. Okay, so negative three x squared plus six x and then minus two. So you can see here that it is graphing out our equation. The nice thing about Desmos is that you can use your mouse or your keypad to zoom in. And if I go to an X value of one and I click on the vertex, see how, oh wait, there we go. See how it actually shows me the coordinate one comma one. And that is exactly what we got from our calculator. All right, cool. Let's do number two. So number two, it is a positive A value. And a positive A value means that this quadratic is going to smile. So this one here is going to be a smile. Because it's a smile, the vertex is gonna be located on the very bottom, which means that this is going to be a minimum value. And now we are going to find out exactly what coordinate that happens at. So here we go, x equals opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of b, uh-oh, the linear guy is missing, b is missing, what does that mean? It means it's a zero. So zero divided by two times one is going to be zero. So that means that our vertex point is going to be located at zero comma something. So let me swing back over to Desmos here, and I'm going to change some values. Nice thing is you can just enter your cursor where you need, and you can delete things. So I'm going to keep my x squared in there, and I'm going to delete all of that out, and I'm going to make that a plus 3. So x squared plus 3. Now I can't see my graph, so that means that I need to zoom out a little bit. Okay, cool. There's my graph. So then I'm going to click on the vertex point, which is located at zero comma something, and that something has a y value of three. So the vertex is located at zero comma three. Algebraically, I can get that y value of three by taking my zero and plugging it in for the x value. So zero squared is zero plus three. There's my y value of three. So you can always do this algebraically. Um, if I test this one algebraically, my y, I'm sorry, my x value was one. So I can do negative three times one square it plus six times one minus two, and that should give me a y value of one. So I'm giving you lots of different options here. You can do things algebraically, you can use your graphing calculator, you can use Desmos to graph on. All right, let's do number three. Remember, pause it ahead of me, work the problem, and then hit play, and then make sure that you have thought through this problem correctly and that your math looks good. This is a negative A. Negative means that it's going to be a frown. Frown means that the vertex is going to be on the tippy top of the parabola. So that means that your frown is going to give you a maximum value. Now let's figure out where that maximum value is located. So we've got X equals opposite of B over 2A. So that's going to be the opposite of 6 over 2 times a is a negative 1. That's negative 6 on top. That's negative 2 on the bottom. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is a positive 3. So we are looking at a vertex of 3 comma something. I'm going to hop back over to Desmos. I'm going to make that a negative x squared plus 6x minus 2. I'm just going to grab and drag. So here is my x value at 3. 
So my vertex should be right there located at three comma seven. All right, um, last one that is a positive A value, a mm, positive is gonna smile. A smile has a vertex down here at the very bottom. So that means that this smile is going to have a minimum value. And now we find the coordinate it's located at. X equals the opposite of B over two times A, which is one. So that's negative two divided by positive two, which is a negative one. Negative one comma something. Uh, let me change up my method. You can put it in on Desmos. I'm just going to use algebra here. So I am going to plug in a negative one. So negative one square it plus two times a negative one minus three and I get a y value of negative four. So my vertex is located at negative one comma negative four. All right, I hope that um, life is good for you right now. And now we are going to totally graph these guys. So how am I going to graph? Well, we've already been doing it. So when we graph, there are certain kind of markers, things that are important that we want to make sure get on our graph. So step number one, we need to find that vertex point. We are going to use x equals opposite of b over 2a. That is going to help us identify where the vertex is. This thing right here, it is also called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is a invisible vertical line that goes exactly down the middle of a parabola. Okay, so I will be graphing that for you, but the axis of symmetry shows the exact middle of the parabola and shows that they are perfectly symmetrical with one another. Okay, so step number one, we're gonna find the vertex point that is always the most important. Step number two, we are going to place the vertex point in the middle of your table of values. So if I come down to my table of values, that means that I am going to put my vertex right there, right in the middle of my table of values. And then we're gonna use our table of values uh, to fill in around the vertex point. And I will show you how to do that um, on Desmos. You already know where to find a table of values in your graphing calculator. I wanna show you how to do that on Desmos. Okay, and then we're just gonna answer some questions over here. So check it out. X equals the opposite of B over 2A. A is negative three, we are missing B and we are missing C. So that's gonna be zero divided by two times a negative three, which is just zero. So zero is my vertex, zero comma something. So I'm gonna head over to Desmos and I am going to make that a negative three X and then I'm going to get rid of all of the stuff. Okay, so here is the graph and my vertex is located right there at zero comma zero. So what we can do is we can plot zero, zero right here as the vertex on our graph. So the vertex point is zero comma zero. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line X equals zero. That means, let me grab my pink highlighter. 
that this invisible vertical line is going to go right down the center of our of our parabola and our graph is going to be perfectly symmetrical on either side. Negative A tells me that it's going to frown and I can see that um, on Desmos that it's going to frown. So it is going to be perfectly symmetrical, even space on both sides here of that pink dashed line. Okay. Let me flip back over to Desmos, and I want to show you how you can view your table of values. So my equation is shown here, but if I go up to this little gear and I click on that, the gear gives you a couple of different options on how you want to see things. So if you convert and you click on that table of values, then what you're going to see is your table of values. So you can begin to fill in your table of values off of the one here on Desmos. So that means that um, that's going to be a negative one comma negative three, and that's going to be a negative two negative twelve. Hmm. But I don't see negative three, and if I scroll up, I still can't see negative three. So check it out. You can go to the blank space down at the bottom of your table of values. And you can enter in your value negative three, and it automatically calculates the y value to be negative 27. That's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so one comma negative three and two comma negative 12, and I can't see three, but I can add that onto my table of values, and three is going to be negative 27. So I don't know if you have noticed, but do you see the perfect symmetry in this graph? Zeros in the middle, and then negative threes, and then negative twelves, and then negative twenty-sevens. When I plot these points, one, two, three, I can't go all the way down to twenty-seven. Um, negative two, dang, I can't go down to negative twelve. Okay, how about negative one, one, two, three? and then positive one, negative one, two, three. So you can see that the amount of space here is perfectly symmetrical. So I'm just going to kind of sketch my graph out like that. And then I'm gonna finish with all of my questions here. So the domain, the domain measures the X values. So this part of the graph is going to keep getting extending farther and farther and farther to the left. How far? To negative infinity. And this part of the graph is going to keep going forward, right? Because your, um, your frown is just getting wider and wider and wider. So that's going to keep going all the way to positive infinity. The other way to say that is to write the symbol for all real numbers. The range that measures the y values. So this graph is going to keep going down forever, all the way down to negative infinity, and it's going to go as high as the maximum value, and we already know that maximum value is zero. And then I put a bracket because my graph actually touches zero. Parentheses are for infinities because it is not possible for me to touch infinity. But a bracket means that I actually touch the point, I actually touch the origin at zero, zero, so I'm going to put a bracket on that. Um, let's see, the other way to write that would be y values are less than or equal to zero. Uh, your math one teacher may have written it in um, as an inequality, and your math teacher may have written it as interval notation. Both of those things are correct. Okay, the roots, remember, are the same thing as zeros or x-intercepts, which are the same things as solutions. Remember, all four of those things mean the same thing, and that means that I'm just looking for where my graph touches the x-axis. Well, it's right there, so I have one root and it's located at x equals zero. Or if you want, you could always put the coordinate zero comma zero. So it only touches the x-axis one time. That means that there is one root. Now, something that I want to note to you here is that 
a parabola or quadratic function has at most two roots. A parabola has at most two roots. That means that you could have one root, you could have zero roots, but you can never have more than two. You can never have more than two roots. All right, cool. Let's take a look at number two. So number two, I am going to find my vertex point first, and I'm going to put it right there in the middle of my table of values. So the vertex point is located at x equals opposite of b, which is missing 0, over 2 times a negative 1. So that means my vertex is going to be at 0 comma something. I'm looking at this negative anticipating that it is going to be a frown. Let me switch over here. I want to get back to my equation so I can, um, what am I doing? Oh, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to X that out and I'm going to type in my equation again. So that is going to be uh, Y equals negative X shift six, two arrow out and then a plus five. All right, so here it is. My vertex is right there at zero comma five, zero comma five. So I'm gonna plot zero, one, two, three, four, five. There it is. And I'm gonna write my vertex as zero comma five. So that also means that I have this invisible line, which is going right down the center of my parabola. And that invisible line is located at x equals, it's a line, so it has to be the equation of a line, x equals zero. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to Desmos and I'm going to go to the gear and I'm gonna select the table of values so that I can fill in the rest of my table of values. So negative one comma four, um, negative two, positive one, and then I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I'm gonna type in a negative three, which would be negative four. All right, and then positive one, positive four, positive two, positive one, and then positive three, what am I doing? Wait a minute. Oh, I was looking at the bottom of my, um, my table of values and I confused myself. So positive three is at negative four. Wait, why am I confusing myself? Nope, okay, I look good. So I'm looking for symmetry. So positive fours, positive ones, negative fours. That is a perfectly symmetrical table of values. So now I'm just gonna plot the rest of my points. So I have to go negative one, two, three, negative one, two, three, four, negative one, two, positive one, negative one, positive one, two, three, four, and then one positive four, and then two positive one, and then three down here at negative four. So there is my frown. And now I'm going to answer some questions. So the domain, my parabola is going to keep getting wider and wider and wider. So to the left, it's going to go forever, negative infinity. To the right, it's going to go forever, positive infinity. Or you can say all real numbers. For a parabola, the domain is always going to be that. For the range, we're talking y values. So this is going to go down forever. That means negative infinity. And it's going to go as high as my maximum value, which we already know is positive 5. Um, if you want that as an inequality, those y values are less or equal to 
positive five. All right, now my roots. Well, my roots aren't looking to be very exact. So my roots are right there and right there. So I have two roots at, okay, let's see, does Desmos help us out on this? If I click that X intercept, I knew it wasn't gonna be pretty, but they are giving me a decimal approximation. Okay, so um, I just realized that you can't see anything that I was writing, I apologize. Um, so that is going to be at, I'm gonna write the coordinate, uh, negative 2.236 comma zero, and then there's going to be another one right there at positive 2.236 comma zero. Okay, so two roots, they're not nice, but I at least can find some decimal approximations for them. All right, last one. So I am in standard form, I need to find the vertex, and I am going to put the vertex right here in the middle. So vertex is located at the opposite of negative two, that's positive two, over two times one. So two over two is positive one. My vertex is going to be located at one comma something. All right, so let me go back to Desmos. I'm going to get rid of that. And I've got a y equals um, x squared minus 2x minus 8. And I need to rearrange this a little bit. All right, so the vertex is right there, located at 1 comma negative 9. So that means that I have a vertex point at 1 comma negative 9. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, I'm off the graph, just one unit. And I have an axis of symmetry at x equals 1. It's just what that number is of the vertex, x equals 1. That means that I have this invisible line of symmetry right there through the graph. Okay, table of values time. So select your table of values and fill it in. So zero, negative eight, negative one, negative five, negative two comma zero, and then two comma negative eight, three comma negative five, and whoops, I went one too far. Uh, four comma zero. All right, so let's plot them. So I've got zero, negative eight, and two, negative eight, and then negative one, one, two, three, four, five, and then the same thing right there. I'm just going based off of symmetry, and then negative one, two, zero, and then one, two, three, four, zero. All right, so here is my smile on my parabola. The domain, your x values, the smile is going to keep getting wider and wider and wider. So to the left, I'm going forever. To the right, I'm going forever, which means that the domain is all real numbers. The range, the lowest this can go, is my minimum value at negative 9. And then this parabola is going to go up forever. So that's positive infinity. Ladies and gentlemen, we always go from smallest to largest. So for the x's, I always start on the left and then go to the right. And then for the y values, I always start down because those are the smallest values and then go up. So always from smallest to largest. The inequality there would your x, um, sorry, your y values would be greater or equal to negative nine. And then I don't know if you noticed or not, but my roots, I have two of them. They are my x intercepts. And you may have thought it when we wrote it right there. Because those are zeros, 
that's exactly what they are. There are zeros, they are the roots. So I have two roots and they are located at negative two comma zero and at positive four comma zero. So a root right there and a root right there. And that's it, graphene quadratics number one.